Hello viewers and welcome to another edition of our women's program. Today we have taken up a very important and a very sensitive topic. Well our topic today is celebrating diversity and gender inclusivity in society. In most patriarchal societies, it is the power of the male, male gender or the male sex that often rules the society and culture and uh, the other genders uh, don't have much of a place when it comes uh, to the domination in a patriarchal society of a man. Now, gender variant uh, people have existed throughout the world and at all times, celebrated in certain countries and cultures, denigrated in others. But then, yes, people whose identities do not really fall within the strict boundary uh, of the male or the female, when such gender has been placed in another, another binary called the X gender marker and, uh, and at least uh, in some countries this is an accepted norm. Well, uh, psychologist Rachel Lynn Golden, who is a researcher on sexuality and gender identity, termed the transgender as, uh, as she described someone, uh, well, she has described this the transgender is someone who is uh, from non-binary, pan-gender, bi-gender or anyone who expresses their gender differently from the sex they were assigned to at birth. Now only recently in uh, western uh, countries and many many western scholars or Indian scholars also are actually focusing a lot in their study and their research on the transgender. But in Hindu society, the term or uh, the usage or the acceptance of the transgender has been there for a long time. Maybe it's been over 2000 years. And interestingly, Plato, the Greek uh, philosopher, he in 385 BC, in fact, he has used the term and in his work called uh, Symposium. So it was uh, in 2014 that the Indian government along with Bangladesh as well as uh, some other countries actually have uh, Nepal inclusive has actually given acceptance officially recognized uh, the transgender people and recognized that uh, uh, that it, it is it is now that this gender is also part of the society. In fact, the Supreme Court has also come up and recognized and I quote the Supreme Court order when it is said it is the right of every human being to choose their gender and this choice is not a social or a medical issue but it is a human rights issue. Now interestingly in 2014 when such a recognition was given when the community of transgender in our country in our country that is in India was around 3 million people today in 2022, I'm sure the number and the figures must have gone up much more. Why am I quoting this figure? Is to point out the fact that transgender as a gender is there in our society, but often because of misinformation, because of wrong information, because of lack of correct information, well, there's a lot of stigma that is attached, a lot of discrimination and, uh, well, this community, these people are not recognized and often they are hurt also by the kind of uh, expressions we choose to use or the kind of behavior that we give to them. So today, to do away with much of the misinformation that the society suffers from, we are here in the studio of Dur Darshan Shalong to bring up this topic in the forefront, talk about this, the transgender people and uh, what are the challenges they are facing, what are the kind of laws that are there in existence, which are the organizations that are actually working for their benefit and what more does the state and the government need to do and the community at large needs to play a role towards inclusivity and uh, diversity that we need to accept. So, well, to discuss this topic today, I am being joined with me by Rabina Subba. 
Rabina Subba, of course, she is an advocate and she is the founder chairperson of Shama Kami. And Shama Kami is the only registered LGBTQIA collective in Shillong. We are also being joined by Bakordor Lingdo. Now, Bakordor Lingdo is a project coordinator of Sathi and she is the president of Shama Kami as well. Well, that's it then. These are our panelists today. So I warmly welcome the two of you to the studio of Doordarshan Shillong and thank you once again for giving us your time and coming to us to, to this uh, station today to discuss on this very important topic. Thank you. When we suffer from wrong information, it is then when uh, you know, society reacts differently. But once we are well informed, uh, we will behave and we will accept. Tell us a little bit, who are the transgenders? So as we know in our society, we only identify two genders, that is male and female, and the two boxes that both of them fit into, that is the masculine gender and the feminine gender. And when you are born with a sexual identity, particular sexual identity, you have to fit in those boxes and you have to have those traits that are required by our society. Mm -hmm. Then only you're accepted mm -hmm. as a female mm -hmm. or as a male. Right. Now, apart from that, if you are somebody who does not fit in that boxes, then you become a threat to the society mm -hmm. and you're not accepted easily as a male nor as a female. Mm -hmm. So this is where transgenders come in. Mm -hmm. And now we call it as a new third box right. or the third gender. Mm -hmm. Now, what happens usually is people still do not want to accept the fact that this gender exists. Exist. Exactly. Exists. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we also started working with transgenders a long time back, since 2008, it was very difficult for people to really speak about this issue. Mm -hmm. And for me to stand on a platform and speak about the community's rights was a very big taboo. Yes. It was not very easy. Easy. It was not at all easy. Yes. We had so we lots come, of yeah, hurdles I'm and sure, challenges. I'm sure that, you know, the challenges you must have faced, especially from within your community, <laughs> from within your professional uh, people very also. True, I'm very sure true. there must have yes. been. A, but then we yes. will talk about it a bit later. I'm so glad, Rabina, that you, you know, brought up the issue of this difference between sex and gender. Yeah. Because we need to again tell the world, tell the people that sex is biological yes. and gender is social. Yes. It is a social construct, the identity that people, the society, has given us and yes as you rightly said yes the transgender also is you know is a sex and not you know and not uh, a gender identification yes, yes. because gender identification whether I, I am a female but my feminine traits the traits quote unquote is what the society expects me to be right so glad that you brought it up I now come to Bakordor Bakordor uh, nice to actually interact with you, you know, and I'm sure that you today will uphold uh, the entire community, you know, that you'll be speaking on their behalf. Tell us a little bit about yourself, Bakordor, because I'm sure it might not have been a very easy journey for you from, from when you started to where you are today. Uh, when I was a very small, at a very young age, I was like, I don't want to mix myself mo so much with the people around me. Even in the schools, I always with my some of my siblings, you know, playing with them only. I never go to mix up with other child. So my child, my childhood is just like you know, from school to home, mm -hmm. and is passing out that. Mm -hmm. And even though in school days, uh, it was in nine standards, I was also like abused, like you know, like talking by the teacher class teachers on health education when it comes to the chapters of reproductions, sex education. It talks about, you know, it reflects about what I am. Okay, okay. Be just because I'm a little bit feminine. So she liked, you know, abusing me in front of all the students. Mm -hmm. So that, uh, I just like passing of, of that one. And when I passed my matriculation, I went to one of the school is uh, boys, mm -hmm. where there are only the boys there, St. Mm -hmm. College, mm -hmm. I went. So, but that passed me like very smoothly and no, nothing happens to me but at uh, and my graduation also is like very smooth because i always like you know doing my education at home mm -hmm. just in okay. education so i pass out all my education and after that i come to work okay and i start working it and my work i i just like at that time i was a little bit 
a bit discreet, I can say, mm -hmm. myself, like close, into close up. Mm. So uh, after that, it was after 2019, when I start, you know, like coming out like as a transgender person. Yeah. So my family is still like very big sh shock, shock for them. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because I had nobody, why you want to become like this? You no, know, my parents, my relatives are calling me. Yeah. Why you are performing, you dress up, you put in yourself in social media, Facebook, Instagram. Mm -hmm. But that things like, it hit me, you no, know, like we have, because my, uh, we can call it a gender dysphoria I have. Mm -hmm. So this gender dysphoria had, had given me a lot of high in my mental health had already affected mm -hmm. about my mental health also like where to seek it mm -hmm. at that time so what I went like I talked to my family like see only males and females are not there mm -hmm. because intersex also we have mm -hmm. so what you are going to identify about this intersex mm -hmm. so even the religion, when it comes to religions, because I belong from the Christian uh, family. So my relative, they ask me, they, they try to find out, they go and deep in what happened to me. Mm. So that's how I relate to my, my relative, like, see, and the sex is there. If you want to Google, you can Google it, mm -hmm. you find it out. Mm. So this is how they start knowing that, yes, mm. there are, or not there is not no only males and females. Mm. Okay, so now as uh, then after that I went to Bangalore. Bangalore, I get a job over there, but because of COVID, I find I have to come back to Shillong. Then in Shillong at that time, at that time my journey is starting very get very harder because I have to support my family or so. Okay. So I searched searching a job. I got one of the company which is uh, I can say, you know, there's a box when you fill out the mm -hmm. form. We have a male, females, and others. So I. I take in others and when interviews done everything fine the when it comes to the uh, background of the job which they need I, I i i have that and the qualification they need is 10 plus 2 which i myself i'm graduation so what happened with the hr is that just because i'm a transgender they reject me and they give a lot of excuses mm -hmm. So this is the how things like work in workplace in Shillong. So I was so exhausted myself. What will I do now? How will I survive myself now? So I cannot, you know, I cannot go to sex work because I don't like that work. So at that time, uh, at that time it was COVID. Uh, there is one project which come out uh, that is the uh, North East Arkies uh, that was. Um, uh, run by the uh, St. Denis College of Social and Mass and Media Communication. It was at that time I tried to apply in that project, then I get selected over there. Okay. So from there, uh, I got selected because I, during the COVID time, mm -hmm. I used to do, you know, like doing a lot, doing photograph okay. and doing makeup. Mm -hmm. So I used to click those, then I send it to them. So I, I apply in the photographer, so I got selected. And they're very interesting about this as a transgender. So at that time, I worked with them. It was so nice that working with them, they are so in cliff, mm -hmm. inclusive, right. and can say, and it worked very well. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm sure the journey has been rough, you know, that you've given us a thing. I mean, you've just stated in few words, but I'm, I'm sure the journey that you were rejected, that you were discriminated, that, uh, you know, in the job as well, just because you did not fit in that box, as uh, Rabina said, because you fitted in some other box. Mm. So, so it must be a lot of hurt, a lot of pain that you've gone through, right? Yes. But then slowly you've overcome it. And definitely a job gives one that empowerment. And today mm. you're an empowered person. You're economically empowered, right? Because you're earning. And mm. I'm sure you have, you have you have been contributing and you have so much more plans for the future. Mm. We will come back to that yeah. a little later. But Rabina coming back, you know, when she was the rating, you know, Bakordor was telling me all yeah. about that. I, I could just, you know, feel, you know, I could only empathize with her <coughs> that whenever you don't fit into certain molds, then it is a society who just rejects you. Whether irrespective of the fact whether you have the qualification or you don't yes. have the qualification, right? So why is it always so necessary to fit in the box, you know? Because, you know, there are countries now, there's a debate now coming up that just like in certain countries, they're actually doing away in I I identity cards, in many other ID cards, they are not actually, they, they have done away with the 
gender box actually. Mm -hmm. Do you think this is one way also of, of you know, taking up this uh, situation right from that level where she said she had to fit a box and just because she f did not fit in that box, she did not tick in the right box, she was not accepted? Uh, well, um, speaking about India and our society, um, it will still take a long time, Moshami. Mm -hmm. It's not very easy. Uh, we have tried our level best in so many manners to bring about sensitization programs mm -hmm. on gender and sexuality mm -hmm. issues. Mm -hmm. And um, I would say we have succeeded to some extent. To some extent okay. Okay? Uh, law enforcement agencies are really very cooperative in this okay. and very supportive about this issue. Um, we are still trying our best with church leaders. Mm -hmm. It has been very difficult to sensitize them. Um, s few of the civil society organizations are there who support us okay. and are accepting about this issue. Talking about the boxes, I don't know when will India really come up with not putting on those boxes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because uh, just after the Supreme Court uh, judgment of 2014 only, mm -hmm there was an addition of a third box. Okay, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the debate whether it should be T G mm -hmm. or O okay. was still a debate. Mm -hmm. So before it was O, then again they said no, O should others should be removed. Mm -hmm. Then again T G was there. Mm -hmm. um, so that three boxes are still there. Okay. Um, as an activist, as a person who is so queer friendly and working with the queer community, I don't like those boxes. Mm -hmm. That's what no, one has, it, no one has given a right. Those yes. boxes totally. you know, no one has given a right yeah, to say yeah. that M is the first box, yeah. F is the second yes. box, and T G is the third. Mm -hmm. You know, no one has given that right mm -hmm. to say that you are one, mm -hmm. I'm two, and mm -hmm. she's three. Mm -hmm. So, I suppose even that will be the answer with Cordor too. <laughs> even Cordor will not like that. Mm -hmm. um, but it's not in our hands. Yeah. But, but then, uh, Rabina, in uh, 2014, you know, the government also has uh, passed a law, a ruling, an act. And they said that, uh, you know, all transgenders also should be accepted and uh, should be given uh, preferences or should be part of employment and yes. education as yes. well. Because there's discrimination even there, even in education. Yes. Right? Yes. So what about this act, if you can tell us a little bit, and how, uh, how uh, encouraging is this act, or do you think that act needs a little bit more, uh, you know, to be refurbished once again so that it is more sensitive? Yeah. I think the Transgenders Protection Act came out in 2019. Okay. But when we are talking about um, gender identity, mm -hmm. Uh, the judgment came out in 2014 right. where the Supreme Court gave a historic judgment saying that each and every individual mm. is free to Which identify is, mm. his or her gender identity mm. irrespective of the sex right. that he or she was born mm. with. Mm -hmm. So along with that came the 2018 judgment again mm. where the scrapping of section 377 mm. which said that same sex or unnatural sex mm sexual relationship is a criminal offense. Right. So that was removed again. Mm. So these were some of the uh, good things that happened in the mm. long run. Mm. And along with that 2018 uh, judgment where third gender was recognized mm. and where the Supreme Court gave a, uh, gave a direction that they should be now inclusive mm. in every space of the society. Exactly. Exactly. Be it education, mm. be it health services, mm. be it uh, livelihood options or everything. Mm. But um, we still have a lot of hurdles more to overcome. Mm. And then this Transgender Protection Act 2019 came in, which again speaks about discrimination, that in every space, transgender people should not be discriminated. Mm. Then again, there is um, reservation for job opportunities, okay. uh, sc uh, scaling up their skills right. for livelihood mm. options. Then healthcare services, where there has to be a separate wards in the hospitals, right. unisex toilets in every public spaces and hospitals and government office everywhere. I mean, all these things are there mm -hmm. in that. Mm -hmm. um, well, the act has definitely given lots of things, but again, there are few flaws which uh, the community did not really like mm -hmm. about the act. Like, for example, um, I think about the certificate partner. Mm. 
I think there was a, a certificate part to be issued by mm -hmm. the district magistrate. Mm -hmm. But again, there is no clear guidelines on how the district magistrate will be examining okay. the transgender person who self-perceives herself or himself as a transgender mm. irrespective of the biological mm. sex. Mm. And then there is again another section which speaks about uh, applying for a transgender certificate uh, that is if the transgender community person wants to identify as a male or a female mm. then she has to bring forward a medical certificate. Okay. So be it a certificate that has been given by a psychologist mm or maybe a doctor, any, any, any kind of surg uh, surgery uh, or anything uh, like that. Uh, uh, so this is something which uh, the community is not liking it uh, because they, have, they feel that why is it necessary for me uh, to bring a medical certificate exactly. uh, to just you know, uh, identify myself, myself right. as a male or a female. Uh, so these are some of the flaws which uh, are there in, uh, in the um, act. And another one is uh, which we all really um, do not really go for this is uh, for any kind of uh, criminal offense okay. or any kind of human rights violations, be it like crimes like murder mm. or rape, mm. sexual assault, the maximum punishment is only two years. Okay. While for a normal cisgender, mm. cisgender mm -hmm. women, mm -hmm. according to the Indian Penal Code, mm -hmm. for a rape, it's more than seven to seven ten years, years or even twenty years. Okay. You see, so this is something uh, which the entire country is uh, not really liking about this act, mm. and uh, we are all against it. Okay. So maybe a few more years down the lane, right. yeah. maybe amendments will happen, mm -hmm. but it'll take time. Yeah. Yeah, talking about time taking, you know, when she was narrating about her family not accepting it. Yes, I don't really blame the family. You know why? Because. Uh, Lack of education, you know, lack of uh, information, right. you know, and, uh, and for a family it does take time, right? So, and slowly that acceptance and then again, you know, what the society will say. We right. so live by the norms and the values that, uh, that is there around us that anything they, they fear that, you know, we will be targeted, right? But then, uh, Bakor Dor, it's nice to know that you are involved in this project, uh, your uh, project co coordinator of Sati, mm -hmm. and also the president of Ashama Kami. Tell us what kind of roles, what are the works that you people are doing, you know, based on what you, you do in these projects. When I, uh, I met one of my friends who was uh, with Ashama Kami, with Lam Jing Shai, uh, she introduced me to, uh, to Lam Jing Shai, then after that I met Ribina there. So we are we have not been interact. We have not been knowing so much each others. But with my work, uh, like I take it first with myself. Like I start myself. I take myself individually as an activist at that time. Okay. So these work come automatically to me. Okay. okay. So like uh, when I after I get uh, over my project from uh, like uh, from Northeast Arkies, then I got uh, another job in it. So over there, then and the other quickly, like automatically, these people are coming to me. Mm -hmm. I think they know that I am the voice. Mm -hmm. So after that, after passing one of the trans activists from Shillong, so everyone, every communities are looking forward who will be standing for the community in Shillong. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, for me, like first, I have to stand up for myself first. Mm -hmm. Then, through me, then the, com the you know, like the community itself will stand by themselves also. Mm -hmm. So. Under this project of uh, Sati, we run on the society project. Uh, I've been working with them uh, around uh, seven months now. So under this project, we work on the legal documents, mm -hmm. like you know, how to change the transgender to get a transgender identity so card. Okay. Yeah. Then how to deal with the stakeholders. Mm -hmm. So uh, we are also working with the uh, policies on transgenders currently. So we also deals with you know with the police department. Okay. So these are my work. Okay. So like to uh, even do like we also do like mobilizing the community. Mm. So how to come out yourself, mm. how to stand by yourself. Mm. So this is the how and my work is on. Okay, all right. So ever since I'm sure many people have come forward, right? Because now they, they know there are uh, organizations that protect mm. them, like empowers them. So they must have come forward, right? Because you know, that fear must be all within. 
Mm. Like, how do I come and where do I go? Mm. So now that they know that there is a place, so I'm sure you have been meeting a number of people yeah. who have come forward to you, right? Yeah. And you're trying to help them out yeah. and uh, gain back their confidence. Mm. I think eventually, uh, Rabina, what happens is that, you know, the way society treats, you know, people, it erodes also our self-confidence, right? It takes away a part of us and we, like she for some time was at home. She said she was fearful, right? That fear factor is there, that what will others do to me? Maybe I will be, you know, hurt or harmed yeah. in some way, right? You are also, uh, you know, doing some wonderful work and you said that you are the only registered, uh, yeah. you know, uh, collective, uh, yeah. you know, society or a, of this chairperson of Shama Kami. So apart uh, from what she has told, what else is being taken up by you? Because I, I'm sure I've seen you coming forward in many that pride uh, march you yeah. people have, right? You have taken it up and you're absolutely in the forefront of yeah. things. Uh, yeah, um, uh, the journey has been a very challenging, that is what I said. Mm. And um, Shillong being a Christian dominated state, right, right. it was very difficult for us for us first and foremost mm. to speak about this subject mm. openly. People were uh, calling me up especially the church leaders okay. and uh, they were saying me not to speak about this mm -hmm. issue mm -hmm. as they did not they did not want Meghalaya state to be reflected as a state where homosexual activity existed okay. this was one thing and there were many local uh, women organizations who were not supportive about this mm -hmm. issue but after 2014 judgment after th 2018 mm -hmm. judgment I think things have changed mm -hmm. they have started changing and uh, it is because of Shamakami's initiative that State Its Control Society approached me yeah. and they wanted to launch their first targeted intervention HIV AIDS project. Mm -hmm. This is the name Lamjing Shai, that is where she okay. was taking the name. Mm. Lamjing Shai was launched and we were working with men having sex with men okay. and transgender population right. along with female sex workers. So okay. it was a core composite project mm. and it was the first project ever to be launched in Shillong. Okay. So State Its Control Society came up to me and said, requested, Rabina, since you are mobilizing with the community, you're working with the community, mm. you know them very well. Mm. So we want your help to launch this project. And okay. that is how Lam Jing Shai was launched in 2010. Okay. And we opened our office, I still remember, in June 2nd, which was the second year celebration of the Delhi High Court anniversary. Do you remember the Delhi High Court 2009 mm -hmm. judgment where they scrapped off section 377 of okay. IPC that time? Okay. <laughs> right, right, right. We were still celebrating yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So it was that time and mm. we launched this project in June 2nd. I still mm. remember that. Mm. Now, what happened with this project was this project came as a gift to me, mm -hmm. I'll say. Mm -hmm. I'm very thankful still to State AIDS Control Society that this project was launched. Why it is a gift is because through Lam Jing Shai project, mm -hmm. we could speak about the LGBTQI issues mm -hmm. through a health perspective. Okay. And it was much more easier for us to, to come up mm -hmm. to a platform mm -hmm. and speak about the community. Right. Their struggles, their challenges, their issues, their human rights violations, their rights and their dignity. Absolutely. I mean, so uh, it was yeah. much more easier, easier for me to speak mm -hmm. from the HIV AIDS mm -hmm. platform. Mm -hmm. Quickly, what is it that, uh, you know, what is going on in the state? What kind of help you are getting from quickly from the state government? Uh, Very short. Um, mm -hmm. We are thankful that Social Welfare Department is um, now coming up with many uh, things and we are collaborating with them and working together. So we have just uh, drafted uh, the state uh, transgender policy okay, okay. and we are awaiting comments from different departments. Okay. Uh, once it is, uh, the comments all comes from different departments, mm. then we will be editing the mm. policy properly mm. and then maybe it will be passed off later. Mm. Uh, the state has already set up their transgender welfare board, okay. justice board, mm -hmm. and uh, the East Kasi Hills district has also set up the district Social Justice Welfare Board no? and uh, um, Cordor is also one of the member okay. in that uh, okay. particular board. So, so what I understand are things are moving. Things are a moving. A little hesitantly, a little not so sure, but then, you know, yes, as I said, it, it is, is lack of information. Yes. It is a thing. And I'm sure in the days ahead, you know, the, this this uh, gender, they call the transgender, you know, their position will be much more secure and yeah. much more accepted 
yes. uh, by the society at large. Yes. Quick word from you, Cordor. What is it that you would like to appeal to the people who are watching this program? What kind of, you know, a little bit more human they should be when it, uh, when it comes to uh, transgender people? To the people, the message is that, you know, even your child is whatever he is, whether he is like from the community or where, where you belong from the disability community. So accepting your child, you know, they are the ch your child. Mm -hmm. Remember, you have been carrying them for nine months. You should never throw them because, you know, they are a God gift. Mm -hmm. You don't know what God have given to you. Mm -hmm. It depends on the parents, how you going to raise that child. Mm -hmm. So that's the thing. You have to understand your child. Okay. You have to be your, uh, your child as a friend, as your, you know, uh, more close to them. Okay. Talk in, in a very polite manner. You know, that and is the whole way. Be sensitive yeah. to the whole yeah, issue. That yeah. how the you know, the child can share with the f a mother or a father or a brother or sisters. Okay. That is how we can do that. All you right. know, you cannot just show them right. because it's your child. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And uh, I mean, listening to your child when a child comes, I mean, do not admonish and do not, uh, right. you know, try to judge, mm. but then listen, accept. And the world will accept. Mm -hmm. If right. we are the first ones, if we accept something, the world at large around us, whom we fear so much, will also accept. Yes. Yes. Right? And of course, changing mindset is one of the biggest things. Absolutely. Washington absolutely. Is. Changing mindsets. Because if we don't change our mindset today, which is the 21st century, then when? Yes. Right? Yes. Thank Very you true. so much to both of you, Rabina you, and you. Bakordor, for coming to the studio of uh, Durdarshan Shillong and uh, talking so bravely, so upfront, you know, about this topic. I'm sure there's so much more to be spoken, to be heard, <laughs> to be told, mm. but then time is a constraint. Yeah. Well, you know, viewers, uh, they say that uh, one should not judge a person uh, by their sexual orientation, by their wealth, or by their power, but we should value a person because of the contribution he or she makes to the society at large. And I'm sure that the transgender community people also are contributing significantly in all that they are doing. And acceptance is what they all are seeking from us. Let us play that role. And I'm sure you will do that. And you're better informed today after watching this discussion. Thank you very much for joining us. And until next time, from all of us here, it's wishing you goodbye.